Let's talk about now glycoconjugates. So a glycoconjugate is just something else that is attached to a carbohydrate. So uh, basically that means either a protein or a lipid in most cases. Um, and so there are broadly speaking three kinds of glycoconjugates, which include proteoglycans, glycoproteins, and then glycolipids. Um, so obviously proteoglycans and glycoproteins are, are proteins that have carbohydrates attached to them. And then glycolipids are, are lipids that have uh, uh, some sort of sugar molecule as the head group. So let's talk about proteoglycans first. These are uh, important parts of the extracellular matrix and they also are found on the surface of a lot of cells. And the basic structure uh, is pretty much what it looks like here. Uh, most proteoglycans have are proteins that have a long unbranched glycosaminoglycans of one kind or another attached at specific serine residues. Um, these are just some examples um, and uh, are two categories of proteoglycans. So syndicans are membrane proteins. So these are meaning that the membrane is uh, protein is actually either embedded in or through the membrane and uh, contains a combination of again these, these sugars including heparin sulfates and chondroitin sulfates. So remember those are long unbranched um, uh, glycosaminoglycans. And then uh, glycocans are are another type of um, non-membrane protein. So these are globular proteins that have um, uh, again heparin sulfates, for example, but uh, attached to the membrane via what's called a GPI anchor. So uh, uh, basically, a glycolipid um, that has a protein. So it's all three. You have a, a lipid. Um, the lipid part is down here. Uh, a, uh, a carbohydrate anchor that connects the lipid to the protein and then the protein has uh, these long uh, uh, polysaccharides attached to the, the, the so-called core protein. Um, a lot of these also have cleavage sites so sometimes they're they're cut by other enzymes that cut proteins or cut the GPI anchor and then they're released into the extracellular fluid um, sometimes as signaling molecules or hormones uh, and uh, among other functions. Um, these proteoglycans have a lot of different jobs in, in different contexts. Um, these just are some examples. Um, basically, they don't necessarily act as binding sites for specific receptors. Um, of course, they're not enzymes, but what they often do is just act as locations for other proteins to bind and um, and coordinate. So, uh, for example, um, uh, a lot of the signaling molecules, proteins need to uh, attach to each other, especially in the extracellular matrix. Obviously, the extracellular matrix is a large volume, so uh, it's hard to just randomly bump into another uh, molecule. So, a lot of these these signaling proteins will have binding sites for or uh, will bind to heparin sulfate for example and then that ability uh, allows them to be sort of immobilized in the extracellular matrix or um, close to a cell membrane which is uh, then useful for um, just being close to the cell and being close to other proteins that they might be able to bind to so it just sort of acts as a scaffolding for other signaling proteins um, outside the cell to be um, uh, linked on and then <clears throat> these proteins can also be found uh, not attached to the cell membrane, but instead just making up the extracellular matrix. So you know, a lot of times when we talk about cells, you, you probably imagine them just sort of floating in uh, a fluid. But in reality, the, the extracellular matrix, the, the space outside of cells in your tissues, is this complex uh, meshwork of proteins and and uh, these proteoglycans that uh, are what the cells are embedded in and attached to so um, this is an example this big uh, hairy looking thing is actually multiple proteoglycans so each little branch is a proteoglycan which is attached to this core polysaccharide of uh, hyaluronan so it's this, this is one of these big giant polysaccharides 
And these can be found in the extracellular matrix, sort of uh, tangled up with other structural proteins like collagen and fibronectin. And that, again, just sort of stabilizes those proteins, which in turn can act as attachment points for uh, structural proteins in the cell. So a lot of cells have these proteins, uh, especially <clears throat> sort of structural tissues, have cells with these integrin proteins. The integrin proteins are embedded in the membrane, but then they attach to the cytoskeleton, um, which is represented by this actin filament down here. Uh, and then the integrin proteins in turn uh, bind to fibronectin or to the proteoglycans. And that's how cells sort of keep themselves anchored to the extracellular matrix. That's how cells, uh, you know, that's what sort of one of the mechanisms, one of the forces that keep cells held together within tissues and what makes tissues um, sort of solid rather than letting, letting the cells all kind of slide around within the extracellular matrix. And then uh, glyco, uh, glycoproteins are another type of protein with carbohydrates attached. So the two names sound familiar. You have proteoglycans and glycoproteins. Um, but glycoproteins specifically uh, are membrane proteins that have uh, poly polysaccharides, much smaller, shorter polysaccharides than proteoglycans that are usually branched and uh, are attached differently. So whereas uh, proteoglycans always have long unbranched polysaccharides attached at the serine residues, Glycoproteins have shorter, uh, more complex branched uh, uh, carbohydrates that are attached at either uh, serine or threonine residues, and so those are O-linked residues, meaning they're attached by oxygen atoms, or at asparagine residues, and those are N-linked glycopro N-linked carbohydrates, which means they're linked by or at nitrogen atoms. Uh, also, by the way, um, this is how a lot of carbohydrates are, are depicted um, in, in diagrams. So um, to, to represent each individual monosaccharide residue, uh, a different shape is used and, and a different uh, combination of colors. Um, so, you know, we don't need to worry about what these, these symbols mean because, again, unlike with uh, proteins or amino acids, there are way more of these than are worth trying to keep track of. But um, this is just how... Uh, a lot of times you'll see these molecules drawn. Um, so, and this shows the uh, attachment points again. The, um, uh, if it's uh, attached at a serine or threonine residue, it's oh, it's O-linked. So the serine and threonine both end in uh, have side chains with OH uh, uh, groups on them. So here you have uh, galactosamine. Um, uh, attached to serine residue and then an n-linked um, glyco or glycoprotein would be one like this where it's attached at the the asparagine side chain um, but but the idea is that, uh, uh, the this overall structure is pretty much the same at least the attachment point and then the types of glycoprotein or gly carbohydrates um, uh, at each one can vary quite a bit um, and again, we'll talk about uh, these uh, more later. They're, they're basically involved in, in signaling between cells and to some extent within cells. Um, and then glycolipids are uh, what they sound like. These are lipid molecules that have a polysaccharide as the head group. Um, they're sometimes uh, also called glycosphingolipids. They go by other names. Um, we saw already that these can be uh, part of proteoglycans. They also can be signaling or recognition molecules in their own right. We'll actually talk about these a little bit more later when we, when we get to the chapter on uh, lipids. Um, and this is just what uh, an example of one might look like. So you've got, this is the lipid part, the part that would actually be embedded in the membrane, and then uh, a, a set of uh, polysaccharides um, attached to one of the head groups. So um, uh, that again will be part of the membrane itself. So um, in addition to providing energy to uh, cells and to uh, having structural roles in the cell, uh, another important job for sugar molecules is as uh, signaling or sort of information carrying molecules. And this is important both for communication between molecules and uh, communication uh, to some extent within, I mean, communication between cells and communication uh, within the cell. So, uh, 
For example, there are a whole class of proteins called lectins, and these are found both in eukaryote and prokaryote uh, cells. These are proteins that specifically bind to carbohydrates, and usually they bind to specific uh, combinations of carbohydrates. Um, and so uh, a lot of uh, viruses and bacteria actually also have lectin or lectin-like proteins, and those are important because they are there, or they, they uh, viruses and bacteria use them to recognize host cells. So uh, viruses and, and, and those bacteria that that are uh, that reproduce or uh, invade host cells to survive um, are able to recognize their host by being able to bind to those proteins. And so these these lectin proteins are involved in that. And then some toxins that are released by bacteria or other cells. Uh, work by binding to um, carbohydrates on the cell membrane and they get into the cell and cause damage that way. Um, but then within uh, or between cells of the same species you may see lectin protein. So this protein called P-selectin for example um, is uh, uh, recognizes uh, special uh, glycoproteins in um, these cells called leukocytes and uh, they're important. Leukocytes are part of your uh, immune system. They travel around in your blood and their ability to uh, uh, attach to the uh, blood vessels uh, requires interactions between P-selectins and their, their glycoproteins. Uh, within the cell you have lectin-like proteins on for example the Golgi apparatus. So uh, and this is one of the ways that the Golgi and the endoplasmic reticulum knows how to traffic molecules around inside the cell. So uh, an enzyme, for example, that's destined for a lysosome, a lysosome um, inside the cell might have a specific um, uh, carbohydrate attached to it that recognizes uh, a lectin uh, uh, protein in the Golgi membrane, and then that might trigger the uh, the transport of that enzyme to a lysosome, which is a, a specialized uh, organelle in the cell that's responsible for breaking down other molecules. So, uh, so the the carbohydrates in these examples uh, essentially act like little labels. They they uh, tell cells that are talking to each other. Um, you know, they they help signal that uh, their presence or where they're supposed to go. Um, it, uh, viruses and bacteria again use them as little uh, uh, tags so that they can recognize their host cell and then inside the cell there are trafficking uh, uh, organelles and membranes that uh, use these as again almost like shipping labels so uh, so they know where these proteins are supposed to end up and that does it for this chapter, um, so thanks again for listening.